Hi, my name is Karthik from Design School by WPAlgorithm.com. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to build powerful Elementor proposed grids without having to write any piece of code and without having to use any third party add on whatsoever. Now, I made a video on this explaining how to do this using CSS, but it turns out that with Elementor version 3.12 or Elementor Pro version 3.12 and above, you can do it natively all within Elementor. So if you're ready, I'll show you how cool it is. Let's get started. Let's start by creating a new page. So I'll go to pages in the dashboard, click on add new. You can do it with a custom post type or even a template. I'll call it new loop 3.12. And I'll change the template to Elementor full width. Hit publish. And once this page is published, I'll just click on edit with Elementor. Just like that, we'll be taken to the Elementor interface. So you know the drill. Okay, once we're in the Elementor interface, now is the time to drag in the loop grid widget. Now this is the same widget which you found in 3.9 or 3.8 I suppose. Once drag that, you can pick the post type that you want. I'll just click on create template. So we'll create our first initial design of the grid. Then we'll definitely customize individual items and it gives us this little loop item you can place everything you want within this i'll just click and drag the post title which is definitely something that we want and we'll adjust the typography of this maybe around that that is totally fine i'll click on the widgets button again maybe post excerpt below this I'll click and drag it. Let's also adjust the style. We'll give it. And finally, let's add a button, which is basically a link leading to the page. So I'll just click on the dynamic tag and click on post URL. Now this can be a custom post tab as well. Let's also align the button onto the center. Do the same with all the text elements as well. So I'll change this from H1 to H2. And once you're done with creating the individual loop item, actually I'm not done with creating the individual loop item. I'll use the navigator. I'll actually give a background to the container. That is too strong. Maybe let's give this. This looks good. So once you're done with the customizing the loop grid, I'll just click on save and back. And that gives us a base design for our loop grid. Now is now comes the interesting part where you can have uh, as many loop alternating templates as you want. So what do I mean by that? Again, I'll just click on the loop widget and the template was already set. Now you can choose the number of columns or you can simply change this to whatever you need. Let's change the items on page to nine so we can play with the, Okay, now you can play with these options. Masonry basically just clubs all the elements of different heights together. And the main thing I want to show you is this, which is to apply an alternate template. This is where the whole customization thing starts. So once you pick apply an alternate template, you get this dialog box and it's basically a repeater field. And from what I read from the Elementor release, they'll allow up to 25 alternate templates. So you can have 25 different items having 25 different designs in the grid. Anyway, let's start with the first one. So once you choose alternate template and click on create template, it will give you this dialog box. Just click on save and on Safari, you need to click on this pop up blocked button that will open up the loop item where you can design an alternate template, right? You have all the elements you need to design the alternate template. Let's start by creating a container. Uh, let's give it a gradient background or whatever. I think that looks better. You can also give a minimum height to the container under the layout tab. So maybe around 250 pixels minimum height would look good. Again, you can click on the plus button. Let's add the post title. And this can be any post. It can be a post, it can be a custom post type. Let's change the color to white. And let's also change the typography. Maybe around that would look good. Again, I'll click on the widgets button again. And now, I'll have post excerpt in here, plus button again, and down below, I'll just have a button just like the original one. 
again this should link to our post url i think this is the alternate design that i need so i'll just click on hit publish i'll just click on publish and reload this again we'll see if the alternate loop item was automatically picked or we have to pick it manually it didn't pick that and it did and yeah of course the item was automatically picked it's called loop item 2704 it's automatically picked once it's created and reloaded and position and grid is where you specify on which loop item you want to apply this design i'll just put two and that will apply it to the second loop item see that and there's one more cool thing let's actually apply this design to the very first item in the loop which is this first post and you can choose to apply it once or to apply it every alternating row right if i remove apply once if i just toggle that off you can see every element is getting that design so yeah i'll just click on apply it once and down below you have something called column span and you can see there are basically three columns or columns are basically the number of grid items you have right so there are three columns in here and you can span this across two columns so that will be something like that or you can span this across the whole of the first row or whole of the first three columns so that is a cool thing so that is alternate template for the first element let's also design another one so i'll just click on add item i'll click on create template again now it'll ask us to save this and it'll open up this pop-up that will allow us to create another loop item if it's blocked in safari just click on the pop-up blocked button now again i'll just speed this up with a different gradient maybe around 30 pixels is fine i'll also have a minimum height of something maybe around 300 pixels and i'll just click on the plus button this time i'll have a featured image instead of the excerpt and then i'll have the button so let's drag in the button just change it to read post you can change the text to whatever and link it to the post url i'll align everything onto the center you can change this to h2 featured image now it may not be available in the loop item but once you apply it to the grid you can actually see it in action so in fact we'll have a medium sized something like that maybe around 50 percent should do fine anyway i'll just click on this loop item again i'll use the container to put everything at the center in fact let's also do the same thing to this we'll justify everything onto the center we'll publish this and i'm done with this so i'll publish this loop item as well and we need to specify where we want this design to be applied uh, right now we have like we have like six let's actually increase the items let's make them like 10 or something if there are 10 posts it will just show the 10 posts so now we can see the grid better and let's actually apply it to the last post or maybe let's apply it to the fourth post maybe that will look good so i'll just put four in here so the second alternate design will be applied to the fourth post again i'll click on the second one and i want to span this across three columns so boom you have something like that or maybe let's apply it to the fifth post maybe that will look eye pleasing yeah so something like that should be fine and you can just do on do this on and on i think the limit here is 25 but you won't actually need 25 i think you just need like three or four to highlight the first element uh first grid element or the second grid element and so on and of course you can change the query from posts to any custom post type i'll just click here if i change it to products which is the woocommerce products get that of course you need to change the button text in the template you can choose span for the tablet as well right if you want to leave it at the default for tablet you can just leave it like so on mobile everything is automatically stacked on top of each other but for tablet you can just play with these values and just adjust these
so maybe on tablet you just want to span it across two one it doesn't matter if you want to just span it across one it'll just put it as a regular grid item so something like that you can just play with these values but i find this really interesting and cool so that is the revamped loop grid widget in elementor pro 3.12 if you don't have elementor pro 3.12 you can get it using the link in the description thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video give this video a thumbs up and i'll see you guys in the next one head over to elementor basics playlist on the channel or check out the description for more info